Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Barter Hordes. My name is Robert. Happy Friday. Although, technically, I'm filming this Thursday night. I'm cheating this week. Um, for a couple of reasons. Today was my first day back out in society after my vaccination. Um, for the entire duration of the pandemic, I have not seen or touched another person um, except for my doctor and his nurse. And today was the two week mark after my second dose. So I got a haircut <laughs> for the first time in 15 months, other than buzzing it myself uh, with clippers, which was just awful. Uh, so I got a haircut. I went out and got a cup of coffee. I went to an independent bookstore and then I came home because I was really tired. Uh, I'd forgotten what it's like to be out and about. Anyway, so slowly but surely I'm going to rejoin society. But uh, don't expect me to go become a social butterfly anytime soon. But I had to get out today. I just had to. Um, this week I have finished two books, which is pretty good. Uh, I finished the Ann Tyler novel, Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant, which was the the April selection for the Barter Hordes Backlist Book Club. Um, next month, we're discussing Alice Monroe's collection of short stories, The Progress of Love. If you're interested in joining us for that discussion, uh, the way the club works is we read for the first three weeks of the month, and then starting on the 22nd of the month, we discuss on Voxer, whoever's read the book. Uh, not everybody in the group on Voxer reads every book. People pick and choose as they want to. So even though we have 40 or 50 people in the group, we probably have a dozen or 15 people in any given month reading and discussing. Uh, but you're welcome to join us for that. Uh, I really liked Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant. I am kind of an Ann Tyler fan. Um, I love the way she can so clearly depict the fraught family dynamics of a pretty average American family. Uh, this one goes all the way back to the 1950s up through the 1980s, and so it shows a couple of different decades of culture changes and family changes. But one of the things that she gets so well is how family dynamics can be so difficult and how families can get stuck in the same dynamic and unable to break out of it, even though they know it's a bad dynamic. And that's what happens in this one. Um, very quickly, the story is a woman gets married, has three children, and then her husband abandons her, uh, but they never divorce. She never even tells the kids officially that her husband's left. She just kind of pretends he's on another business trip for the next 20 years. Um, and it's the story of the, the three children, two boys and a girl, and the mother, who is a difficult woman. Um, and the, the children aren't, aren't any prize either. They all have their own special challenges. And I really liked it. If you like Ann Tyler's writing, you will like this book. If you're not a fan of Ann Tyler's kind of very close view of American dysfunctional families, you probably won't like this book. Uh, I likened it when I read it to the one that kind of made her famous, The Accidental Tourist, which is one of my favorites of hers. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, the other book I finished was the soccer book I was reading that I mentioned to you about last week about the formation of the English Prelude. Premier League from 1992 to 2018 when the book was published, and that is called The Club by Joshua Robinson and Jonathan Clegg, two American soccer writers. Um, and it was just terrific. The, the last three chapters almost exactly laid out what happened last week with the breakaway formation or wannabe breakaway formation of the Super League in Europe. That's an idea that's been bouncing around for two decades and keeps getting suggested in different iterations. And so 
the la reading the last couple of chapters of that book were really interesting, having just gone through that week of chaos when they actually did try to form a Super League. But it's a really terrific book if you're interested in the business world of mega entertainment and sports entertainment, or if you're interested in the business world of the Premier League specifically, or if you're just a soccer fan, you'll you'll enjoy this book. I think it's really well done. I'm still reading Paul Farmer's book, um, Fevers, Feuds, and Diamonds, about the Ebola crisis in 2014-2015 in Upper West Africa. Um, but I've kind of put it on the back burner for now. For one thing, it's really long and it's starting to get a little bit repetitive. But we had a couple of judges who had to back out for the Book Two Prize in the middle of the quarterfinals round. And I am substituting for one of them. And it's a nonfiction group that I had only read one of the six already. So I still have five of those books that I need to finish by the end of May. So I really need to get busy on those. And two of them are, are massive bricks. The biggest one is the one that I've already started, and that is Red Comet, which is the, the new biography of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark. Um, I won't since I'm judging for this round, I won't be able to talk about the five books that I'm reading for the Book Two Prize other than to tell you that I'm reading them for the Book Two Prize. So I'm not sure I'll have a whole lot to talk about for the next four and a half weeks while I'm trying to race through these 2,500 pages as quickly as I can. I figured out that if I read 80 to 90 pages a day, I'll make it on time. So that's kind of the schedule I've set for myself. Um, so I'm reading that. Uh, at the bookstore today, I picked up a couple of Korean novels in translation that I'd wanted to pick up. I picked up another book on soccer, um, but I'll not be reading those for a little while. And then if you have followed Rick McDonnell's channel, who has hosted what he's calling the Booktube Spin, he just did the second spin for May and June. And the book that came up on my list, if you're not familiar with what it is, you create a list of 20 books that you are interested in reading. Uh, they can be around four or five different themes, or they can just be 20 books on your shelves, or any way you decide on the 20 books, but you number them one to 20. And then Rick does a public random spin using a random wheel, and whatever number comes up, the number that corresponds on your list, that's the book you're supposed to read in the next two months. And for me, the one that came up is uh, Kazuo Ishiguro's When We Were Orphans. Last year, I was reading all of his books in publication order, and I got sidetracked when I got to When We Were Orphans uh, for the Book Two Prize or something else. I got off track and never got back to it. And as my TBR at home has absolutely exploded. Um, I have had more and more reasons not to get back to it just because there's so many other options of things that I needed to read. And so I'll be reading that one probably in June. I won't be reading it in May while I'm trying to finish these books for the Book Two Prize, but in June, that's when I'll be picking up. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. So that's what I've been reading. Um, the other books in the group, I'm not sure if I'll remember them all. The other books in the group that I need to read besides Red Comet um, is Barack Obama's book, A Promised Land, or the Prom A Promised Land, I think. Um, there's a, a science book called Fathoms. There's another science book called The Entangled Life or something like that. It's about fungi. And then there is, what's the fifth one? I don't remember, uh, but there, there's a fifth one too. Um, but the only two real long ones are the Obama book and Red Comet, the one I'm reading now. And so if I get those under control, I'll feel like I'll be able to read the other three relatively quickly because they're all modest length books. So anyway, that's what I'm reading. That's what I've been doing. I'm still writing every day. Um, I am watching a new K-drama. I finished Hello, My Twenties. It kind of ended flat for me, and I didn't really like the ending too much. 
And so when I realized it was going on into a second season and most of the cast members were changing, I just decided to abandon it after season one. And I started watching one. Um, I think I'm on episode five now. It's called uh, Something in the Rain. And it's really good. It has one of my favorite uh, actresses in it. She was the, the lead in um, Crash Landing on You, which may be my favorite K-drama that I've seen so far. And that was the drama, Something in the Rain was the drama she did right before she did Crash Landing on You. So this one was really good too. This one is, she is a 35-year-old business person. She she works for a coffee company, kind of a franchise company. She's a supervisor for the different owners in her region. And her best friend has a younger brother who is in a gaming company, but he's been in the States studying and working, and he has now come back, and he's grown up now, and they kind of hit it off, but they don't know how to tell anybody because they've always been seen as kind of like family members, but they're not. They're not related in any way, and they've fallen in love. And so it's all about, and he's quite a few years younger than she is, and so they're kind of worried about all the different ramifications. But they're both so adorable that I'm really enjoying it, and you can see some of the problems that they're going to face in the next 10 episodes, but it's fun to watch because they're both such good actors. So that's what I'm watching. I've been watching a lot of soccer. We're in the semifinals in the Champions League and the Europa League. So I've been watching a little bit of that. And the Premier League kicks off again this weekend. I'll be watching some more of that as we get into the final month of this season's competition. I hope you're doing well. Those of you who are still waiting for vaccinations, I feel for you. I hope you can get yours soon. Those of you who don't have to wait and haven't gotten one yet, please consider it. Um, I don't think America is ever going to get to herd immunity because so many people have not gotten the vaccine, but it saves people's lives. It's that simple. I'm still, I still was nervous going out in public today, even wearing a mask, even knowing that I've had both of my vaccine doses. I was still nervous because I haven't been around anybody. I live alone and I went into lockdown at the end of February when the pandemic broke and except for my doctor and the pharmacy, I haven't left my house in over a year. And so today was really weird for me. Um, but it was also kind of fun to get out. Uh, I'm not suddenly going to become an extrovert. No worries there. But I did enjoy getting out and getting back to Quail Ridge Books over in Raleigh, which is my, my favorite local independent bookstore. I haven't been there in a while. And it was nice to get in there. And so I hope you're doing well. Please stay safe. Keep everybody else in mind. Keep everybody else safe. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody.